Hi, everyone. My name is Dimitri Broxen. I'm the Senior Director of Education at Museum of the African Diaspora, and this is In the Artist Studio. Each month, join us as we visit some of our favorite artists in their studios to see what they're currently working on. We, uh, this is a reminder that we follow all of our artist talks with an audience Q&A. So if you're joining us on Zoom, look down at the bottom, you'll see the Q&A panel, which, oh, I see it. <laughs> so it's the icon at the bottom of your screen, I was like, it disappeared. Um, and enter your questions throughout. Don't wait till the end. If something comes to you, we also invite you to drop it into chat. I will be seeing that and monitoring it. Um, if you are joining us on Facebook, enter your comments there. And we will also have our friends today who's watching those and will bring those questions over to us. Um, please also visit our website to see which artists we have coming up. And a reminder that you can always go back and watch our programs immediately after uh, we end the broadcast. Uh, the recording is available on Facebook. You can also go to Museum of the African Diaspora's YouTube channel and see all of the past programs we've done over the last two years. This series was made possible by a generous donation from the West Ridge Foundation. All of our MOAD members and viewers like you who come each and every time we do this program, thank you so much. We couldn't do it without you. I'm going to read our land acknowledgement statement. So Moad remembers that all non-native people to this land are settler occupiers, many of us brought against our will. We in the San Francisco Bay Area acknowledge the Ramatush Ohlone people of this land that we live and work on. We pay our respects to their people, their elders, both past and present and future, and recognize that sovereignty was never ceded. It was never given up. We also acknowledge the continued legacy of systemic racism stemming from the historic inequities of genocide and enslavement that equally requires a process of truth and reconciliation within our nation. I'm really excited today to be joined with my guest, Gio Swaby, who is a, a Bahamian interdisciplinary visual artist currently represented by Claire Oliver Gallery. She's known for her textile portraits that explore and celebrate Blackness. Fwebi graduated with an Associates of Arts degree in Fine Art from the University of the Bahamas and with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in Film, Video, and Integrated Media from Emily Carr University of Art and Design. Swaby's multimedia practice encompasses textile, installation, collage, performance, and video. She has exhibited, exhibited in several galleries and museums, including Claire Oliver Gallery in New York City. Uh, is it the Dye Textile or D? D Textile? D Textile <laughs> in Schmallenberg, Germany, and the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas. Fwibi is currently an MFA candidate at OCAD University in Toronto, Canada, where she currently resides. Um, and I should add that this program is co presented with Claire Oliver Gallery. Welcome, Gio. How are you doing? Good. I'm happy to be <laughs> here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, it's, it's truly an honor. I am really excited to have you here as well. This has been uh, a long time coming. You know, we've, we we first corresponded back in the fall, I want to say, <laughs> and, you know, some, some things that have happened, but I think this is a really exciting time for you. Um, and so, you know, I think everything in its right time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think this is this is probably the perfect time. We're already over kind of like the holiday time and back into it, or I am exactly. anyway. Exactly. And 2021 was quite the year for you. I mean, <laughs> we just watched you explode in your career and, you know, be featured everywhere. I mean, I saw a video of you on OWN and I was like, whoa, I'm, I'm, I, I felt really excited that, uh, you know, we, we got in before that happened and you were inaccessible. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also think 2022 is is proving to be it's going to be a really huge year for you. I mean, I was already reading that you have a wait list for your art um, and, you know, you may end up even being more busy. Um, I, I want to know from you, you know, how has all this attention um, and opportunity impacted the work that you make, the workflow that you have and, and really your thinking about your, your art practice? Hmm. 
I, I would say I, I think about this in kind of like two minds, the way it's affected me. It's affected me in the way that I'm super busy. <laughs> like there is a lot happening. Um, I have a lot more um, exhibitions that I'm a part of now. So the, the demand is a little bit higher, but I've, I've, I've always been a person who, um, I don't actually, I don't want to say that, but my, my production now is a lot higher. Uh, so in that way, I have a lot more attention on my work, a lot more eyes. And I'm mm -hmm. super grateful for that to make the connections, especially to other Black people being able to see the work and um, connect with the work. Uh, but there's also like the thing of feeling like uh, you get to see a response now, which works are people more drawn to, which, which works do they seem less drawn to? And mm. it does have an effect on you. So um, what I try to do, and this is the other side is I'm, just focusing on the studio when I'm in the studio I'm in the studio and I kind of yeah. want to stick to the process that has made me <clears throat> has brought me to the place that I am now I want to keep my process as like honest as possible and make work that I'm truly truly invested in and interested in making and that's where I come from like working from the heart is where I start mm -hmm. I love that I love that sentiment so, so, you know, kind of in a way, it's, it's like you're taking some of that feedback and observing what other folks are doing, but at the same time, you're kind of, when you're in that studio, you're, I guess, I guess kind of like tuning out that, that noise and really focusing on what brings you joy as well, right? Yeah, yeah, because I want to make work that connects, but also I think about if I just made the work that everyone responded to, then I would have mm -hmm. never made some of what I'm making today that people are also responding to. So I kind of have to, that's a lot of trust in the process right there. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you kind of just have to go with that. Uh, another thing that Southwell is having a honest, real circle of people that I can truly mm. depend on for like objective feedback and constructive criticism on the work that I'm making too. That's awesome. That yeah, yeah. Keeping keeping that close circle around you is is critical. Um, you know, I'm I I run the education department at Moad, and you know, occasionally we are joined by students, um, you know, younger students as well in classrooms. And so I always like to to know, you know, what was that moment for you where you decided that art was your pathway? Um, and we're grateful that we that you did decide that. Um, to have such beautiful imagery out in the world. But you know, what, what was that experience? Was there a particular piece that you made? Was, was there a moment? Can, can you kind of think back and, and reflect on, you know, when you decided, yes, being a professional artist, that's, that's for me. Definitely when I started the program at um, College of the Bahamas, now University of the Bahamas, um, mm. I, I didn't even intend to study art. I was just, <laughs> I, was 16 I graduated at 16 years old wow. so I was like what am I going to do I don't know that's not like thinking back on being 16 that's basically still a fetus how do you even <laughs> know what to do so I I think I started off as like a general major uh, but I have always liked art it was always something that I was really drawn to I've always been a creative person a maker um so I took an art class uh, at UB and that's when it really happened for me. Um, I think the core kind of professors that were there at the time, Sue Bennett Williams, Heino Schmidt, John Cox and Tr Katrina Cartwright kind of all instilled different aspects of art making and uh, within me that I still carry today. And that, that was really the beginning. That's when I knew for sure this would be a lifelong journey, perhaps maybe not like, you know, I didn't imagine at that time that I'd be at, in this position that I am now, but I knew that it'd be something that I would have forever. Awesome. Awesome. And I'd love that you acknowledge those, those specific professors that, you know, had that impact on you. That's so important. Um, you know, what, what about your, what about your family? You work in these, you know, in a fascinating, fascinating, um, Form, you know, and 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 I'll say, I, we'll, we'll get to showing your work in in, in a little bit. I'll, I have some images that I'll show on screen. But I remember the first time seeing your artwork, I thought these were were line drawings. 
Um, and then as I zoomed in, then I noticed that you're actually drawing with stitches. And that is, you know, just this huge aspect of your work um, that, you know, I, I, I hope there's people who are not familiar with you um, watching this right now that is just fascinating. It's beautiful. It's brilliant. Um, you know, can, can you kind of walk us through how you know, was, was sewing something that you that you always did? Is this connected to family? And then, how do you go from that switch that switch to I'm going to draw and paint using a sewing machine? Uh, it it is definitely like my use of fabrics and sewing is certainly connected to my family, most especially my mother. Uh, I learned to sew from her. Uh, she she was a dressmaker, so a seamstress. Uh, she didn't really make uh, the kind use use stitching in the way that I use it now, but I learned to love it from her. Um, I'm one of five siblings mm -hmm. and um, nobody else in my family was really kind of drawn to this to this area or to this part of life. So it was really a special connection that I shared with my mom. So, um, that's for me the start of connecting this act of stitching and sewing to love um, and how it feels like such a great medium to express and to communicate love. Um, <clears throat> so it, it holds that really strong connection to family for me because my mom has passed away now. Um, so through my artwork, I am honoring her and also continuing a le legacy that we kind of, you know, that she's already built and that we were working together on. So it's, it's special for me in that way too, that I feel very, very connected to her when I make. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. I love that. You know, I mean, s some people just pick up, pick that up, but I think there's something really special about when, you know, there is that connection with your family um, and, you know, and I, and I love that you're feeling that love every time you're working. Um, really, really sweet. Um, can, can, can you remember the very first piece that you made that that made you feel like, yeah, I'm an artist. This is this is my jam. For stitching, I can remember the, the some of the first works. So I learned sewing from my mom, but then another quilter, John Elliott, showed me more of the techniques that I use today that's like free motion quilting mm -hmm. embroidery um so she was showing me how to use this new quilting machine that i got and she's she's like this is free motion quilting this is what it is and i was like oh my god this is drawing this is like yeah, yeah. this is just drawing with thread and i remember feeling so excited about it i had like this feeling in my chest like in my heart like i found something or like I just feel like you have those moments in life when you can remember or affirm like like before and after this like that was my moment and now it's after that so shortly after that I made I started doing some stitched portraits uh and they were tiny like maybe eight by eleven mm -hmm. and I made a mm -hmm. few of those for an exhibition at pop-up studios in in Nassau Bahamas those were the first works I was like, I've got to continue <laughs> down this path of exploration. I got to see where this takes me. And um, yeah, that was probably, that was like 11 years ago. And I've just been doing that since like honing my craft. That's incredible. Um, you, you know, I think, I think one of the things that we also, that folks may not know, and I, I'm so grateful that there's content that you've put out there. Like you're not, you're not afraid to share your process, um, which I, which I think some artists really keep, you know, tucked away and secretive. But so many of the subject matters that that you have, and, and I'm also kind of looking at the wall behind you simultaneously. <laughs> you know, so so many of your subjects are folks that you know, um, and you know, can can you kind of talk about that process? Yeah, I I feel like because I was choosing to do portraiture it already felt like a very like a personal connection and for me my artwork is primarily like an expression of of love and gratitude 
towards mm -hmm. myself and also towards the people that I am representing. Um, so my work focuses at the moment primarily on um, black, black women and girls. And uh, that's who surrounds me most in my life. Uh, I have three sisters, my mother, and my aunts. I feel like I was, you know, they, that's who raised me. And mm -hmm. um, that's kind of where I start with wanting to express my gratitude and love. Um, so as, as well of, as my friends, a lot of them I met at University of the Palmas and we're still incredibly close today. Uh, so I, I make my selections from there. I reach out to people, ask if they are interested in being a part of it and kind of working through this process with me. And uh, that's, we, we go from there. Everyone so far has said yes, thankfully. I'll let you know <laughs> if that changes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I, I doubt that that's going to change. Um, <laughs> everybody wants to be part of that. And then just even having, you know, I, I'm sure just the act of you asking, you know, someone to, you know, serve as a model for you. I mean, that has to be extra special for folks. I, I mean, I, it's, it's always kind of emotional for me, uh, creating the work and also connecting with people uh, because it's, uh, one of my friends that I uh, represented and, and who I actually have gone back to a lot for different photographs to use as reference is um, Kia Poitier. And I was like, thank you so much for being a part of this. Like, I, I'm just super grateful to you for uh, mm -hmm. working on this with me. And she was like, you know, thank you, because it's an honor to be immortalized in this way. And that kind of sticks with me when I think about what that means to someone to be to be a part of this work with me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I love it, I love it. That's really sweet. Um, yeah, you're, you work with a lot of fabrics in addition to the stitching and, and I promise I'm gonna show some stuff after <laughs> this so that folks can see it. And it's not just me talking about it, but these really fascinating floral prints with lots of different colors and um, you know, how do you choose your fabric? Um, and, you know, how do you choose where to use it? I, I'm, I'm just, it's, it's just really fascinating. And I think, you know, as we go through your work, you'll, folks will see that sometimes you use it very subtly and other times it's, it's, you know, kind of takes over the canvas. Uh, so my fabric search is very like wide reaching when I go travel, when I travel somewhere usually, or when I go back to the Bahamas or, um, even just around Toronto where I live, mm -hmm. I collect. So I'm, maybe it's not for a specific piece at the time, but if I feel really drawn to a fabric, then I get it. So I am a hoarder in, in that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but sometimes I know what I'm making already. And I'm like, I just need this one last color or print that I'm looking for. And then I'm more specific with that search. But I let a lot of who I'm representing sometimes guide me based on the conversation uh... we've had, based on kind of like their overall essence and who they are as a person. And I choose the fabrics based on that. And then the way that I also choose is kind of leaning into aesthetics and like design. Um, I want it to be, you know, I want it to be meaningful and also to be visually appealing as well. Um, not just for the viewer, but also for me as well. That's a part of the fun part of the experience for me is being able to layer and put together different fabrics and that exciting moment of like, wow this looks yeah. this looks good this looks good that's that's awesome I, I love to see that and you know as you're talking I, I can't help but look behind you and you know admire all the different colors that you have on the shelf it's one of the it's one of those situations where it's okay to to hoard uh, especially when you're using it to put out so much beauty in the world that's what i say i'm like this is for work Okay, when I yeah, come yeah. up with an extra suitcase of fabric, I'm like, this is for work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel bad about it. 
But uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'll go through all of it, but there's always use for fabric, right? It's a part, so much mm -hmm. a part of our regular everyday life. That's why I like to use it too. So I know that even if I don't end up using it in the long run, it can always be used for something. Mm. Now, now, okay. W one more thing before I, I put up an image, but I'm also wonder, you know, you've, you've come from the Bahamas and you know, we're color, no one's afraid of color in the Bahamas, right? Um, oh. Color is everywhere. It's in the landscape. It's on the people. It's, it's just, it's just a part of life. And I imagine in Toronto, like, like in San Francisco, you know, the world is, is rather devoid of color, <laughs> you know, it's gray and blues and blacks and, you know, we're, we're afraid of the color <laughs> in, in Northern cities. Um, so, you know, does, have you, has that had any impact on, you know, your work? I, I, I see oftentimes artists who work, you know, who, who move from a, a more tropical environment to a Western um, urban environment, you know, start to lose some of their color palette. Has that any, any of that ever impacted you? I think if anything, I've been more intentional about uh -huh. wanting to use and stay with color because it's a way for me to uh, stay connected to my culture and to my heritage, to home. Um, I, I guess my whole practice is about forming and establishing and maintaining connection. Um, part of it is to home. It can feel really, mm -hmm. you know, alienating being far away, especially during the pandemic when you can't, well, you can previously just travel home. Like I, like I'm not too far away. It's three hours on a flight, but still it was, at, you know, Toronto was so locked down. We couldn't really even mm -hmm. leave. And these fabrics were like a comfort to me being able to work with something that just looks familiar, looks like home, feels like home. Um, and I'm really thankful to have also a nice uh, base of Bahamian friends here. My partner, Stephen Schmidt, is Bahamian. Um, my friend and studio assistant, Veronica Dorset, also Bahamian. So wow. I, I have that. I still have that very like homey feel, even though I'm far away. Mm -hmm. Incredible. That's that's awesome. I and I love that. I love that you're you're maintaining that and and it has a special place for you. Um, let's pull up some images. Ooh, images. <laughs> okay, so just give me a second to put in the slideshow. And I, I'm starting off with an image of you. I hope that's okay with you, yeah. just because. <laughs> I, I think it's important to, to understand scale, right? So many mm -hmm. of us are experiencing this work, um, you know, online. And, you know, oftentimes the little JPEGs, you know, on a website can have you feeling like the pieces, you know, the size of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Yeah. These are life size images that, <laughs> that you're working with. Yeah, they're... I would say almost everything that I make is life size, even if it's a bust size or just like from the neck up, they're all mm -hmm. life size. Uh, that's important to me because I think about the kind of environment I want to create when these works are shown together. Um, and I think about people entering the space. I think especially about people that look like me, black women and girls, and also black people in general coming into the space and being able to see themselves reflected. So mm -hmm. it was important for me that these works are life size. It oh feels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Uh, it, it feels like community. You walk into a space and perhaps you see a silhouette or a drawing that reminds you of someone or reminds you of yourself and there's a way you can relate to the figure as if it's almost present and with you when it's a full-sized and mm. um, life-size figure yes i love that i love that and, and you definitely feel it you know especially in an image like this and i love i love the gold gilding um so now, now me jumping out, I, I, I just, you know, I have a selection of just maybe about six images that I, that I really wanted to go into. Um, and I do have a closer up of this one, but you know, this is, this is one of those where you have the really subtle color um, working on 
Um, but again, that impact of just like, you know, that, that, that first feeling of like, okay, this is someone who really knows how to draw. And then it's like, wait, hold on. There's these little threads hanging. And then as you zoom in closer, like in this one, um, this is a little pixelated, I'm sorry. Um, but I really wanted to zoom in. Then you start to notice that this is all sewn and for for me, you know, it was just that that moment of just like, wow, there's a magic within this work. It's beautiful on its own as a drawing, you know, if you did this simply with pencil, but there's just there's a level of magic and and wonder that happens um when you're actually, you know, start to notice that it's it's sewing and I have no idea how you do it. <laughs> um <laughs> You know, it, it's it's also one of those like I can never do this. Um, I don't even know how to sew a straight line. Um. <laughs> you know, that's funny. I hear the straight line a lot. <laughs> straight line is not that easy. I'm like, <laughs> I gotta pull the ruler out. I gotta be like figuring out. Okay, is this straight or not? Um, well, thank you. I appreciate it that you recognize the labor that goes into the work. Um, you know, I don't consider myself, uh, especially when I think about quilting and in that world of embroidery, uh, there's, you know, those people are learning and constantly developing their craft for their entire lives. They, the learning mm. never really stops. So I consider myself kind of at the beginning still of my journey through learning. And I'm so excited about everything else there is for me to know. Um, uh, that the the threads that you talk about hanging off are kind of like a, they serve as a bit of a clue for the viewer from far away to know there's a little bit more going on um, and I love to watch that moment happen too mm. of people coming up and recognizing what it what it really is what's really happening um, the stitching to me really indicates a level of labor that goes into the process. Um, and I consider it a labor of, of love. And it kind mm -hmm. of, it's, it's very connected to this process of um, uh, creating connections and friendships and how much labor that really takes. And especially when I'm thinking about Black women, the labor that we've put in to learn about love between us to learn how to love ourselves and in, in you know in a world that constantly tells us that really we shouldn't um mm -hmm. it paints a picture that uh often doesn't um consider us as uh when we think about standards of beauty which are you know that's they're arbitrary right um we are almost never placed within that realm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see so much pushback against that now, learning to be able to love ourselves and being able to show love for one another, that uh, it's really such beautiful work that goes into it. And I want to honor that work through my practice. I, I love it. And, and so and so I'm assuming that that ties really into the title of this body of work, the Pretty Pretty series. Um, mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is, is showing is showing these these uh, different versions of, of what pretty entails. Yeah, so the title is like a Bahamian way of speaking. Like we say something twice if we want to put emphasis on it in a way. So mm -hmm. like someone, you, you know, Oh, she's not regular pretty. It's like pretty, pretty. So <laughs> this, this little title comes from this. This work for me is a celebration of like personal style as well. And, um, you know, just kind of being able to find that beauty within and mm -hmm. how we indicate that on the outside by the way that we choose to style ourselves, by the way that we dress. Um, I also think about style as a form of resistance, like in a world that, doesn't want us to be seen that tells us to be unseen when you choose to dress in a certain way without worrying about how other people perceive you and it's really just 
what you want to do. Like if you want to come to Toronto where everyone is in black and you want to wear hot pink <laughs> pants and yellow boots, then, you know, I love that. So I wanted to celebrate like the individual kind of personal styles that people have um, been building pretty much, you know, for, from the time that we can choose our own clothing, we start that process. Mm. Yeah, you know, kind of also with that, you know, I just can't help but notice the, the most dense stitching is within the hair. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a particularly natural style of hair. Um, is, 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 that, is that just something that, you know, besides the seam at the waist, um, where the, the stitching is really, um, again, densely packed and, and, and where I'm sure you spent a lot of energy and attention, um, as opposed to some of the other areas where you just kind of you know, there's a hint of a knee um, mm -hmm. in there. Is is there an intentionality with you behind you focusing on all the details of the locks? Certainly, like uh, hair uh, within my practice for me as a black woman is such an important and major part of my life and of my culture as well. Um, hair is so meaningful to me when I think about it because it's like this direct kind of ancestral connection to um, the people that have come before me that perhaps, you know, I can really trace back my familial line to too far back, especially being from the island, and especially being mm -hmm. a black person and our, the history of enslavement that we have endured throughout the the black diaspora uh, hair to me is such a direct connection because when you even look back at um, older photographs from 100 years ago or 100 years before that you can recognize some of the similarities in the way that we've learned to style our hair now and then so so much of that history that wasn't written down we still were able to pass it along you know, through uh, family connections and, um, you know, maybe your older sister told you how to do your hair or your aunt or your mother or your mm -hmm. grandmother. So this work is for me, a celebration of that. Also the like unique beauty that we've cultivated through hairstyles, the versatility, it's truly like art to me. Um, mm -hmm. I, the, the amount of time that I spend on my hair, I would say is, is, more than any other kind of like personal care for within my personal kind of routine and that's true for so many other black women so i wanted to be able to like pay tribute to that work that we have done to to learn how to care for our hair and also to highlight this act of hair care really as an act of love like mm. your sister takes the time to spend three hours braiding your hair. That's mm -hmm, truly yeah. like, that's a special moment. And to me, it's, it's a way that we can, and we do show our love for one another. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm going to show a couple of the other images in within this series with the little pop out detail. Um, <laughs> I love that. Hey, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> courtesy of you and Claire Oliver Gallery's website. Thank you so much. Um, you know, and, and for, for me, really, this one pops out to me, um, not only because I saw it as the image for an upcoming exhibition of yours, um, <laughs> but also that pop of that pink within there. Yeah, the use of the fabric in these works. Uh, this is another one from the Pretty Pretty series that we just talked about. Um, it is, like I mentioned, about personal style. So I wanted to use the fabric and sometimes the color thread to highlight a particular item that seems to be like a key item of the way the outfit is put together mm. or um, the way that the, uh, the sitter has chosen to wear it. Um, it also kind of livens up the work a little bit to me. It's you're able to like, it moves your eye across the work a little bit more to have these little focuses of color and also the denser like lines of stitching to contrast with one another. 
I love it. I love it. It's 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 gorgeous. Even the details with the jewelry, um, you know, j just just again, you know, you're you're making these decisions where we get this the sense of it, um, and it's w without you. I don't know how to, I don't know how to say this without but over you know in, in our school they say overworking something um you know you're not overworking and it's just giving us just what we need to get that sense of this style and this movement oh well thank you <laughs> I appreciate it well, I mean it's it's a process I spend a lot of time taking out lines too sometimes you put a line mm. in you're like oh that does not that's not working. I have got to figure out how to make it work. So it's a, it's like push and pull. You put things in and then take things out until you get to a point when it just feels, I let my, I let my heart tell me when it's finished, you know, and like, uh, got it. Like, what they say about seasoning and the ancestors saying like, yeah, ancestors going to tell you when to stop. That's exactly. It. Exactly. <laughs> It's just enough, yeah, yeah, that, right? There's, there's that that moment where it's it's too little, and there's that moment where it's just right, and you want to stop right there. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, you know, there, there's this also this thing where you've made. I'm really fascinated to hear that sometimes you you pull the stitches out because in my head, that's not even possible, right? Um, so, so I think that's really that's really fascinating. There's these moments though, also where you, you know, kind of oh. You kind of break these rules. Um, just give me one second. I have to plug in. Um, but you you create you break these rules where you start to um, you know connect the threads over. Um, can you kind of talk about that process for you? And I'll be. Of course. Um, first, I want to say hi, Sydney. I see Sydney's here. This is uh, this is a portrait of Sydney Colby, um, my incredible friend and also incredible Bahamian artist. Uh, so the stitching, we see some of the lines that connect in a way that don't really read as a part of the human figure. Uh, that these, these works are, the stitching that we see is actually the, the back, what we, what we think of as the back anyway. So when I'm stitching on the top side, I flip this over and that's what's shown as the final piece. So a lot of these like lines that are connecting like between the eyes and across the hands. Yeah. Those, those are where I have finished, finished a stitch and lifted the needle up and moved to another part of the work. Um, so I consider those parts to be kind of like um, a map of sorts. It's, it's like a little journey for the viewer to follow along with me and see the process of how this work was made um, and really get a sense of that stitching. Also leaving those in there is for me like this rejection of perfection that I wanna mm. embrace in my practice and also in my life. Something I've been slowly but surely moving toward being able to say, um, this isn't uh, perfect, but it's like perfectly imperfect. And we love that. So, uh, these works definitely celebrate that, that process of being able to be okay with that and um, still being able to find kind of beauty in those moments. Oh my gosh, I love it. And, and you know, I, I just think it's, that, that's an aspect of the work that's the most fascinating. You know, I, I, I read it as like being very intentional and being part of the front of the piece. But again, I don't, I don't, I don't do any sewing work like this with the machine. So, so I don't know, you know, what that's like. And, and then it also kind of connects the work to contour drawing um, that, you know, and these, it, it just, in the, the moments where you leave it, it's just really beautiful. Um, and it adds so much depth to the piece. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, it's that, that part of it is like an intuitive process. It's like the surprise in the work for me when I turn it over and I see uh, that part of it, I can still have this moment of connecting with my work in a way as if I'm almost a viewer sometimes when, mm. when I turn it over and I see the other side. That's, I love it. Um, and, you know, same, same series again, but you know, you're really going into the color here. 
really diving deep into it. Um, and, you know, and I know this is a work from 2021. Do you see yourself moving further and further into color or is it just whenever the moment, um, you um, know, arises? I I work back and forth, like I make works that are pretty much mostly fabric and only a tiny bit of stitching. And then I work like mm. this where it's somewhere in the middle. And then like the previous works we saw that are mostly stitching. Um, I don't really kind of box myself in into thinking that I'm only going to work with this certain amount of color or only going to do this certain amount. Um, I start working and I allow that process to lead me through. Uh, so I have different series of works that utilize fabric and sewing and thread in different ways, mm, but okay. I go back and forth. So it's not necessarily like a linear process toward less and more color, but I guess I think of it more as like a circular practice of coming back to things or revisiting things or, um, reworking and combining them. That's, I, I, I love that. I love that way of working, um, you know, in, instead of, you know, so many artists feel the need to, you know, I, I've done it. I've, I've, now I can move on and I'm doing something completely different. Um, I, 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 I guess at this moment, I really want to ask you, I'm, I'm super curious about this process, you know, a little bit before we started going live with everyone. You know, I it was I began to ask you a little bit about this process. Most of the artists that I interview are not currently in school, um, especially in an MFA program. What what is that like for you? You know, you're you're working as you say in this very circular fashion. How does that work without you know trying to dish dirt on your university or anything like that? <laughs> but you know, what, what is what is this process of really at, at, at being at this very rising career, um, rapidly rising career while simultaneously working on an MFA. Um, uh, I'll tell you, it's a secret, but this was an <laughs> accident. I was, I was not, <laughs> I was not intentionally like, I'm going to do two of the hardest things in my life at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I signed with Claire Oliver Gallery in September 2020. That's also when this program started. As you know, for like wow. a program, I started that application probably a year prior to that. I was already like all set up. I was like, I'm going to go do school. Like I was, I was ready for that part of it. I still feel like I, I you know, it was a good, at the end of the day, I'm, I don't regret doing it, but I'm not going to say it, it's not easy. It's tough. Like trying to figure out the balance of, I have the school and I have this like professional practice that's, they both demand a lot of me. And I also like still need time to rest. Like I still need time for family. I still need time to be able to order McDonald's. Like, what am I going to do? All this? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I have figured out ways to try to integrate each other, to integrate them. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thankful that, you know, what I'm doing in school is what I'm doing in life. So my master's program is certainly informing the work that I make. And also my professional practice is informing my study. So I'm making a lot of the work. I'm doing a lot of reading and then writing about this work. And also mm -hmm. like um, experiences like this, chatting with you, um, being able to have conversations about my work. I figure out new things all the time that immediately goes back into like my thesis work. And, um, I would say everything is, feels like an expedited process. Uh, I, I am excited to be finished soon, like April, but I should be done, um, with school. So yeah, can have some, I'm so looking forward to it. I'm like, already planning everything <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do when I'm finished um but that's just to say like OCAD I I'm having a really incredible experience there my advisors Kathy Moscow and Andrea Fatona are like incredible um and they have really really helped me so much through my process and um asking me the hard questions man they're like mm. what did you think about this 
no i did not but now i will so it's good in that way too that's 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 incredible and and i and i imagine you know your program is also where you really get a lot of individualized focus on your own practice um and you know it sounds like you're unpacking and researching your own practice and thinking about it as opposed to like in an undergraduate program where they're like now you're gonna do this you know this series of <laughs> 10 paintings not using any stitches <laughs> yeah i mean thankfully it's not undergrad because truly you're right they're like well now we're gonna copy this work and blah, blah, blah. i'm yeah. like oh my Th thankfully it is a lot of focus on honing my own kind of practice and craft and challenging me to um in ways that you know perhaps i would have arrived there on my own but this is like a think tank this is like i don't know if anyone watches dragon ball z oh god anyway but there's like they, they do this thing where they go into a hyperbolic time chamber and things mm -hmm. they get really strong in like a week that's what i'm <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what that's what this is like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what well, I'm sure it comes twofold, you know. Oftentimes our gallerists are, are lifelong uh critics of our work or or supporters of our work that are walking us through how we think about our work. So so do you find that you 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 now have like this this community of folks that are walking you through your process and thinking um from multiple angles? yes yeah for sure like um my partner uh steven is also in the program mm -hmm. at the same time so i have oh, that wow. like linear relationship where um someone can also remind me about the deadlines um, <laughs> then i have like um support from uh elders within the program who have so much more knowledge so much more experience than me and they can guide me in a way that, um, you know, would be difficult for me to figure out that path on my own because they've walked it already. Mm. And then also my other peers within the program who are figuring out the, some of the same things as me, our work is in conversation. So it allows me to kind of place my work within like this current, um, within this, this, this current movement of, of young creators and what, what we are doing and young in the sense of not age, but young in the sense mm -hmm. of where we are in our practice. Nice, beautiful, beautiful. That, you know, that, that also makes me think about this community of, you know, I, you said, again, I was, I've, I've been reading articles about you <laughs> for the last few days right now, like it really in depth and, you know, like you hadn't met your, your gallerist before signing with her. Um, and, you know, you're also in this gallery that has this incredible community of creators, you know, talking about, you know, people, you know, of the magnitude of Bisa Butler, <laughs> just, just to name one of the, you know, you've got Adebumi, you've, you've got this, this, uh, this, this community, do, do you find that, I mean, I know you've been in school the entire time, but have have you has that community been an influence on how you think about your work? It definitely has. Like uh, everyone is like a superstar. Everyone is like uh, within that roster. I can see the progress within their practice that they are mm -hmm. pushing themselves, that they are learning always um i see the product that happens from that learning of the exhibitions and the works and the kind of like uh incredible careers that they've created and it's certainly inspiring to me um you know a year ago or like back right before i signed i never could have imagined uh having experienced what i have today like it's it's truly it's truly incredible the amount of just growth that's happened in such a short amount of time. And I think that being with Claire Oliver Gallery and being in the company of such incredible artists has certainly been a part of that for me. And um, uh, they, so many of them were also people that I already knew their work and mm -hmm. was like, super inspired by the work that they were making 
Uh, so it's just, it's really an honor to be a part of such an incredible group of makers and thinkers. That's awesome. Um, so, someone in the Q&A was asking about a particular piece and I don't have that particular piece, but this is definitely along the lines of it. So I hope you'll forgive that. Um, <laughs> But they, you know, they wanted to they wanted to have if you know ask if you could do a walkthrough of the process of creating these works. Of course. Um, so these are these are some of the works that are um, I have works that are more fabric based or like colored fabric where the background is also color and then the figure is also color. Um, but these are ones when I utilize mostly fabric and just a little bit of stitching. So mm -hmm. the um, figure is cut out and then stitched onto the canvas. You can see kind of, if you look around the border of it, you can see the light stitching. Um, mm -hmm. So it's attached to the fabric with, with an adhesive and then sewn on. Uh, so the process in that sense is really simple, but there's a lot more that goes into it for me, like the choice of exactly where the pattern is going to fit onto the figure. So that sometimes takes a couple of times, like cutting it out and figuring out mm -hmm. this didn't really work the way that I thought it would, uh, and then trying something else. Um, also, the way that flowers are positioned, like up or down or um, just sometimes um, if you have a certain color that goes toward the edge of a cutout, it becomes invisible in a way. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot to think about in the positioning of where you choose to cut out. And then there has to be a very, it, it requires like a lot of detailed cutting as well to get across exactly what it is. Um, smaller little curls of the hair or mm -hmm. indicating texture of the hair through the way that it's cut. So that's that's really the process that I go through to to make one of them. Wow. With I mean with these it, it's it's so incredibly detailed. Um you know we we get much more than you know even what we're seeing and I think definitely the florals add this uh, you know alternate dimension to the pieces are, are you actually having people come and sit for you uh are you working off of are you still working off of photography with these I generally work through from photography and wow usually photos that I have taken some of the smaller works um even people that I more so since the pandemic, even people that I've connected oh, yeah, yeah. through social media in some ways, I will ask them for a photo um, just because it's a lot harder to, or it has been a lot harder to photograph. Um, mm -hmm. But all of the large works are based on reference photos that I've taken myself. And that's important for me for to get really the sense of the body language when, because I know what I'm capturing when I take the photograph. And also I'm able to like kind of have a conversation with the person that I'm photographing as well. And all of that goes into the decision of which photo will be chosen. I had to work with a photographer. I think this was in 2020 when travel was completely closed and mm -hmm. most of my friends and family are still in the Bahamas. So I worked like with another Bahamian photographer to get wow. photos through that process, I kind of had to indicate everything that I was looking for. It was a long conversation to say the least. <laughs> then, um, so that was, that was a strange process, not being able to take the photos myself. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm grateful now that, you know, I mean, I don't know, Omicron has kind of put us back a lot, but um, for a lot of my more recent works, I was able to photograph them myself, which was which was like a return to home for me. It was such a good experience. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I you know just just even thinking about you know the more that I just stare at these and and look at where the floral elements are landing, it's 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 brilliant and it's kind of like. I, I, I can see now as you were walking through that process, how if you even just shifted some of these over just slightly, it wouldn't have the same impact, 
you know, th how this one on the left, I'm seeing the eyes and the mouth and the nose. It's the way that you made it fall is, is brilliant. And then the one on the right, I love how this flower is just blossoming from the throat and also the head. Um, it's just, yeah, absolutely brilliant work. Thank you. Well, I think you're brilliant. So now we can see <laughs> a fine, I'll Thank start you. with a fine club for you and... <laughs> Uh, I'm be, I'm being just extra because it really is it's just it's just absolutely stunning work. Um, Thank you. It, it, well, it that really makes is. me feel happy. This is gonna carry me through the rest of like the year. I'm gonna remember Ooh. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just I'm like just keep doing what you're doing. I, I I don't think my words are gonna have an impact. You're still gonna do it. Um, but yes, these these this image I I had to is one that you also shared. Um, but I, I I just love the plus sized uh, figure in here and this this love letter to this to this body. Thank you. Yes, I try to be like a lot like I I'm wanting to represent the body as it is like a real body of this person. Um, this is my sister, by the way. Uh, so it was a real like it was such a fun process to be able to make these. It was weird because I made a series of uh, three of these um, of my three oldest sisters. And then I did three of the pretty, pretty of them as well. So I had the six all with me and I was like, oh my, I feel like they're watching me make this in the studio. Um, but it was also nice. Like, I felt like we had a little gathering of sisters in the studio and I took a lot of photos of them all side by side. And I was like, you know, we're, we're all here, we together. So it was nice. Um, but I try to represent a range of bodies within my work because we don't mm -hmm. all look the same. Um, everyone yep. has a completely different body. Everyone has a completely different form. And because I'm making works where I want viewers to feel seen and see themselves and the work for me so much is about representation. It's important that um, different body types are included within that. Um, I, uh, so I've been exploring that a lot and just naturally because I'm representing the women around me, like I said, this is my mm -hmm. sister and because so many people have, you know, everyone has a different kind of shape. Everyone has a different body that naturally that's going to be shown within the works that I'm making. Um, especially since I'm selecting from a group of people that are already determined in some ways um and i don't i don't think that will be it will be that way forever but but for now i've been selecting from the people that are you know closest to me the people that i'm around a lot yeah I, and you know and I, I think there's something about your love and you know the your joy and then also this history that you have that really reads and resonates with this that otherwise if you didn't have that connection I, I think that would be lost because I mean I, also she's just given us so much life with yes. you know with this with this with this posture <laughs> it's just amazing you get a sense like people who know who it is they yeah from the silhouetted portraits they're like okay I know exactly who that is just based on the <laughs> Just based on the stance, let me tell you, this is exactly her. This is like encapsulating her energy, um, you know? So it, it, I, I, I select my portraits based on that too, the reference photos, which feels the most like them. Mm. And I, I usually tend to work with the ones that just ring completely true to who they are. Excellent, excellent job on that one. Um, and, you know, I think all the works that I've shown so far or that we've examined have been from this last year. Um, what is this? Why is this thing not moving? And I just want, wanted to drop way back to 2015. Um, <laughs> wow. to, to examine, you know, another aspect of your practice, you know, at the beginning on reading your bio, you know, you're an interdisciplinary artist. You're really well known for um, your, your uh, why can't I even think of the words? You're so textile, together textile pieces, yeah. your textile works. Yeah, but you have these other dimensions 
performance, video um, within your practice. And so I, I want to know about this piece and want to know also if, if you have any plans to revisit some of this. Oh my gosh, this is so like <laughs> blast from the past. No one, I'm only ever like, well, the past little while, it's been mostly focused on textiles because that's what I've been mostly focused on. So it's cool to see this piece again. Um, yeah, from 2015, this was this piece I made all the elements of it. So we still get a lot of working with fabrics, working mm -hmm. um, with creating this like wearable um garment. Uh, I made the headpiece as well. Uh, for me, this was when I was living in Vancouver. And um, I was just, I was just kind of exploring how living there had affected me. Um, mm -hmm. Moving from the Bahamas, which was like mostly Black, to Vancouver, where there's really hardly any Black people at all. Like it's a very, very small community there. Um, so I felt really othered in a lot of ways. Um, I felt really alien in a lot of ways. Um, mm. And I could feel that people felt that too, by the way, it's just a feeling. You get on the bus, you can feel it. It's visceral, you feel it within your body. Um, you feel it by the way that, you, that people look at you when you make eye contact with them. Um, so, I wanted to explore that through this work, this idea of like otherness. So I went with kind of like this more, I guess kind of like an alien aesthetic to the work that I was making, but also like I wanted to it to be kind of beautifully adorned because for me, it yeah. was still this celebration of me. Although I was ex exploring my positioning within this kind of society and community, it was still celebratory in a way. Um, yeah, and I couldn't see out of this at all. This headpiece, oh. <laughs> like walking downstairs, I went into the subway, as you can see, couldn't see a thing. And it was just me and my incredible partner, Steven. He works with me on like, just my partner in crime all the time. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, that was a rhyme. Did we did we catch that? I hope this is recorded. We got that. We got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he photographed these works, and he also made sure that I didn't get kidnapped, um, that I didn't fall down any stairs, and it was onto the track. <laughs> didn't go onto the track. He was like, "This is where we stop." Um, yep. Yeah, it was freezing as well, so. I was also very cold, but I think it, wow. I, think it I think it worked out. And I look back on this like very, very fondly of like, I, rem I just can remember shooting this and everything that happened that day. That's, that's, that's incredible. You know, and, and then I think for me, it's, it's also, you've got the brightly colored fabrics, you've got the flowers, you know, that are not necessarily, um, just printed onto onto fabric, and 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 I do see that connection with the work and, and mm -hmm. this adornment, even though this is, you know, ex exploring being you know this outsider alien with within, <laughs> you know, this this space where not a lot of people understand you. Um, mm -hmm. And so yeah, I, I, is there? Do you have any plans? Um, for oh, more yeah. performance pieces? What's the plans? <laughs> I don't know. I. Like currently, I I don't want to be too transparent, but I'm gonna say I don't sure. plan like super super far in advance. Maybe like one or two pieces, but um, so much of what I do is wanting to be able to experience and be within the day that I am in, be able to really feel this moment instead of always kind of being focused toward the future. So I have some, mm. I, I have to be, I have to be like planning toward the future, but also within my practice, I want to maintain this moment of today, which I'm trying to encapsulate within my work. Um, so I'm not planning too, too far ahead into what I'm making. Of course, the next few months, because the work takes over the course yes. of months to create, but um, I don't close anything off. Nothing is closed off. <laughs> Like maybe so, I will, I, I feel like performance was such a transformative experience for me. Um, 
that I think that for sure I will explore that again. Do I know when? I can't say for sure, but um, nothing is really, I've, I've never taken anything completely off the table. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's all still, anything that I've made before I could, I could revisit again. Awesome. Awesome. That, I, I love, I love that answer that it's, it's, it's not necessarily in the plans, but it, it could circle back around. I'm not seeing any, any questions in the Q and A. So I'm just going to take that as we've been so thorough that no one has any additional questions. However, if you do, we still have a, a just a few more minutes left. And if folks want to put your questions, please drop them in there. Um, and I'm going to ask my last few questions in the meantime. Um, and today is sharing all of your, your sites so people can follow you and see what Thank you're you. up to next. Which art, which artists, I, I always want to know, which artists have been the greatest inspiration on your, on your practice? This is like such a big question. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the, the hard one. The hard question. Okay. So many of my peers, but I want to start there. Keishel Knowles, Sydney Colby, Steven Schmidt. Veronica Dorset, like a core group of people, Kia Poitier, people that I have also photographed as well. Um, mm. Because we all went to our school together, a lot of us are artists now, still making. So I'm inspired by so much of the work that they make and also that connection that we formed as like artists at the College of the Bahamas. Um, also super inspired by Faith Ringgold, Bisa Butler, mm. of course, um, Billy Zangewa, um, Ebony Patterson, huge. Oh my gosh, yes, huge. yes. I mean, like, right? How could you not be? Uh, there's so many more. I'm like, so many more. Nick Cave, we saw with the, I have to mention, just because the, the um, last piece you just showed was so much connected to Nick Cave. I think that was even the artist because we had to choose like a performance artist. I think that oh, might have wow. been the artist who inspired that work. Um, so many more. It's going to be like, we, I could do this all day, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. I, I, yeah, th that's, a, that's an incredible list. And, you know, I can definitely see, well, hopefully very soon you will have some exhibitions with some of those names um, that you threw out there. <laughs> I hope um, so. I sure hope so. Uh, oh, I, there is one question. Oh, did I miss it? Um, oh, someone is curious. Lenora is asking, um, or first of all, saying, it's a pleasure being with you today. Um, they're curious. Ooh, ooh, do you draw with the pencil on canvas and so on top of that? Or is it free so sewing based on your photos? Some wonderful question about process. Uh, I So what I choose to sometimes initially draw onto the canvas with is like a quilting pencil, sometimes a quilting marker. I'll mm. basically put down general lines. But when I'm stitching, I, I tend to add in so much more of the detail as I'm stitching. Um, just because I want, I want the line to lead me as well. So I put down, I, I basically draw the figure onto the canvas and then stitch it. And then I'm also adding in lines as I'm stitching as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. So it's, it sounds like that's your whole process. Like you kind of go back and forth. There's no, you're not dogmatic about your process <laughs> basically. No, no, it's that I, like with everything, I want to leave space. Like I'm, if I get too constricted to something, it, it creates a lot of stress because I'm like, oh my God, this way that I wanted to do it didn't work. And when you just have that way, your mind isn't open to problem solving. Well, for me anyway. Um, so when I approach it, I'm just like, how can I do this like what steps can I take to get there and it's it can be different each time I have a process mm -hmm. that I follow but I also try to leave room for being able to adjust when something is just isn't working I want to be able to like pivot figure out how I can fix this problem and keep moving 
That's awesome. I've I've heard someone say that that's the a sign of a very creative mind. Um, you Ooh. know, to be able to flex with the way that you approach the work. <laughs> so. hey, is that why I hate lists too and reminders? That's 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 exactly why you're just a naturally creative person. <laughs> Thank you. It's in the okay. blood. I'm gonna tell my therapist. Um, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't know that I'm an expert on it, but I've heard it. So, you know, I'm going to take it as true. <laughs> Me too. Um, Me too. Last question for you. Um, and this is your opportunity. What is next for you? I know you can't share everything, um, but is there anything <laughs> that's coming up for you that you are able to share with us? Yes, lots of things I'm very excited about coming this year. Um, up next is Expo Chicago, an art fair in Chicago. Um, super exciting. I also have my museum solo exhibition um, that's going to be opening in May. Oh my God, it's January, isn't it? I was like, next May. <laughs> oh. Yep, May. just four more months, yep. <gasps> May. Anyway, so that's happening at Museum of Fine Arts in Petersburg in May. It will travel after that to Art Institute Chicago. So that's major. There's also a book. Uh, there's also a book that's going along with it. I, I'm so, so excited about that. I'll be able to do, um, I think it's going to be available during Expo Chicago. So mm. that's just uh, such an incredible um, experience. Nicole Hannah Jones uh, wrote for the book. I know. Wow. I was like, <laughs> first time I talked to her, I was like stuck in my seat. Like, why are you to me? Pinch, pinch, pinch. Is this really happening? <laughs> yeah, she's like, I really love your work. I was like, and I really love you. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm so that that was just an incredible experience. I'm so excited for that to come out to be able to share. I wrote a little bit for the book. Melinda Watt and Catherine Pillows also wrote some for the book as well. Um, so I'm excited to be able to share that with everyone, share more of my practice. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that is, I think that's what I, yeah, I think that's everything that I can share that's coming up. Uh, but pretty big news like I'm just over the moon with with everything that I uh, have accomplished so far and everything that is still to come yes and we will all be watching um excitedly and I, I'm gonna plan to get myself to St. Petersburg as well as to Chicago to see this work I would, buy, I would love that I mean if you can if you can that would be so incredible yeah yeah yeah, if yeah, and I'm sure hopefully all the other folks on here will be able to join as well. I'm just seeing lots of beautiful love coming through the chat here, as well as on Facebook. Thank you so much today for sharing some of those with us. Um, this has been an awesome talk. Um, you know, I could talk to you for hours more, <laughs> but we've reached the end today. Gio, this has been incredible. Um, and I hope you have I don't know. You're already going to have this this amazing uh, year coming up for you, but I can't wait to hear about the things that I know are coming up that are under wraps right now. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Dimitri, for inviting me and having me today. It was incredible. Such a fun time to just be able to talk to you. Thank you today for monitoring everything that's happening. And thank you to everyone that that came and shared space with us today and um, wanted to learn more about my practice. I'm just, you know, so happy to be able to share more with you and uh, so, so appreciative of all of the interest that's come and all of the love that I've experienced, all the incredible connections that I've made. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yep, special shout out to uh, Clara Oliver Gallery for co-sponsoring this event. And we will see everyone next time we do this program. And just a reminder that this talk will be immediately available on Facebook and we'll have it on uh, the MOAD YouTube channel by Friday. Have a good one, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, <laughs> have a good one. Bye.